All right, so as you can see in the title, this is all about the major threats to Gitrog decks and how they work against him. This is actually a remake because the original video came out to be 45 minutes long, which is l as long as a friggin' podcast episode. Nobody wants to watch that. Uh, so here we are. We'll also cover several cards that seem good against Frog, but are actually useless. All of this is covered in the Gitrog Primer. This is more or less just a video format of that with some of my own thoughts on each card. I will be making a separate video for Gitrog players on how to deal with all of these, so if you play them, look out for that. With these, keep in mind that just because there's a Gitrog player doesn't mean you should only build against him. Don't slot in cards that do nothing for you outside of stopping the frog unless you're that afraid. Now, the best way to stop a Gitrog player is to simply not let the frog out on the field. Countering it when played or using remo removal are preferred, otherwise you can stop a discard outlet from coming out. That is, if you say, couldn't counter the frog, and don't have removal. Now, exiling Dakmore works, but usually you'll only see it hit the graveyard when the rest of the combo is already prepared, so it's probably already too late. Once the combo starts, it's hard to stop it. Responding at this point entirely depends on if the Gitrog player has a land available to discard or sacrifice, as they can simply do that in response to your removal and continue to combo off with it on the stack. Anyway, first up are the big bads, the things that require removal or Gitrog can't do anything. These are, namely, Rest in Peace. Rest in Peace has an ETB exile all cards from all graveyards, um, this, you know, if you time it right, you can hit a Gitrog's, um, uh, Gitrog's combo piece, um, for, if for some reason they have Dakmore just sitting in their graveyard before they're ready to combo off, I don't know why, um, yeah, you can exile that, and that'll, it'll be, probably put them out of the winning the, the game, they might focus you down, but that's just the name of the game. Uh, and it also has, if a card or token would be put into a graveyard from anywhere, exile it instead. Now this is the main part. This is what stops Gitrog players from comboing off, because we can't put anything into the graveyard. It gets replaced by this effect, which means the Gitrog does not get any value from lands hitting the graveyard anymore. This, you know, it's a must remove as soon as it comes out for a Gitrog player, because there's just nothing they can do against it. On to uh, Leyline of the Void, which is essentially the same thing except without the ETB Exile. It does have the, uh, as a Leyline card, it does have the, if it's in your ha opening hands, you may begin the game with it on the battlefield, so a turn zero spell. Um, this is not that good because it's so inconsistent. You don't want to be spending four mana after, uh, say, you miss the turn zero. Um, it does stop a Gitrog player completely, because they have to remove this, otherwise they get no nothing from the graveyard, um, and then they lose anything they put into it. Um, but yeah, I don't think it's that good. The Gitrog Primer doesn't think it's that good, so probably don't run it. And last, lastly, for this, this kind of effect, we have Wheel of Sun and Moon. This does not exile anything, but it puts us put it on the bottom of our, uh, gra our library instead. Uh, of putting into the graveyard, which, I mean, it does stop us from coming off, but it doesn't exile anything, so, you know, we still have it. It's not dangerous in that sense. Um, however, if you're ready in white, if you're playing this, so just run Rest in Peace over this, it's just better. Uh, this is also a single player target, so, you know, you'd be targeting the Gitrog player, which is... Uh... Anyway, after that we have Yixlid Jailer. This never sees play. Probably you probably don't want to play it. Um, cards in graveyards lose all ability. This is just it stops our dredgers and it stops our titans, uh, which means we can't shuffle our graveyard back into our library. And Dakmore no longer works. It does stop our combo, but it's a creature. It'll die to removal, and it's so targeted for such a niche effect. Don't run it. After that, we have Narset Parter of Veils. Each opponent can't draw more than one card each turn. This is excellent. Um, this used to see a lot of play. Don't know how it does now, but it's so super strong, um, especially since it's a Planeswalker, so it doesn't die to most removal. 
Uh, we do have to, obviously we will have to remove this uh, if we see it, namely through something like Assassin's Trophy or just swinging with the frog uh, into it if they have no blockers. But um, this prevents us, this only lets us draw one card at the beginning of the turn. With Git Rog out, that's usually going to be when you discard a, or I mean, sorry, when you sacrifice a land to Git Rog's effect at your upkeep. Otherwise, you know, it'll hit your draw and then your draw step, and then after that you won't be able to draw anything. Um, now we need, we need to draw all our library in order to combo off. Um, so yeah, bad. Um, then we have Spirit of the Labyrinth, which is the same effect, just on a creature, enchantment creature, mind you, uh, which means it dies to two types of removal, which is pretty easy for us, because we run a lot of it. Um, so not that good. You, we, you'd you prefer to run Narset, but if you don't have access to that, sure, this will work. Um, it will get removed pretty quickly, though. Uh, that's all for the hard stops. Um, Hull Breacher used to be here, but it got banned, thank god. So, yeah. Now we have prevention effects. Namely, or first up, rule of law effects. Now, Rule of Law, each player can't cast uh, more than one spell each turn. It's okay, sure. Um, we'll just, we can still combo through this. It won't stop us. We'll just have to make sure that if we didn't use a um, spell, if we haven't used a spell that yet, we can just remove it after comboing off. Um, otherwise, if we have, we kind of have to wait. Um, however, there is a better version of Rule of Law, which is why I don't suggest this particular card in Archon of Emeria. We'll talk about the other effect it has but later, but first is each player can't cast more than one spell each turn. It's really good um, for the same amount of mana. Sure, it's a creature, it will die to removal, but that'll, you know, we'll have to only use, um, or once it's removed, we'll be able to play stuff, but we'll have to first remove it. It will get targeted really hard by pretty much everyone. Uh, nobody wants to be stuck behind this effect. Uh, the second effect is what really makes this amazing, but we'll talk about that later. Next up we have Edelon of Rhetoric. Same effect. We also have Ethersworn Canonist. We'll talk about that in a sec. Uh, Edelon of Rhetoric, Enchantment Creature. It dies to two types of removal. Not as good. Same effect as Rule of Law. Um, Ethersworn Canonist is fun. Um, each player who cast a non-artifact spell this turn can't cast additional non-artifact spells. This does not hit our rocks, obviously. We prefer um, creatures are to for ramp, but this is good. I don't know. I mean, just this hits everyone, so I don't know. I don't. I don't like it. I wouldn't run it. Archon of Miria is just strictly better. Um, except maybe one mana extra, but, you know. Lastly, we have Deafening Silence. Um, can't cast more than one non-creature. All our, our, most of our, um, ramp is going to be in dorks, so this is fine. It doesn't hurt us. Um, and then all our combo is also going to be creatures, so, you know, it's not good. It, it, it. It doesn't hurt us that much. Um, would not run this against a Gitrog player, or with this ag against a Gitrog player in mind. Uh, anyway, next up we have Prevent Creature Activated Abilities. This is Curse Totem. This is Linvala. This is Damping Matrix. Um, these are good. Obviously, they see a lot of play. Curse Totem is everywhere. Linvala is everywhere. Um... It's annoying because it stops our um, discard outlet, which means um, we won't be able to combo off, obviously. But, eh, we have ways around it. Um, it's still really annoying. It still turns off all our dorks. So, strong. Really strong, especially early. Early is really bad. Uh, same with Linvala, same effect, activated abilities of creatures your opponent's control can't be activated. Super strong. Um, Curse Totem is not 
is uh, symmetrical, so it hits everyone. Linval is asymmetrical, which means only your opponents get the effect, which is stronger, obviously, but it's in white, so... And it's also two mana more. Um, anyway, next up we have Damping Matrix. This is activated abilities of artifacts and creatures can't be activated unless they're mana abilities. Funny, because mana abilities. It does block our uh, discard outlets, but it doesn't block much else. So it's also, you know, one mana more than Cursed Totem. So strongly suggest you don't run this. It's not very good. Anyway, uh, after that, we have Suppression Fields. Activated abilities cost two more to play unless they're mana abilities. This stops our discard outlet, obviously. It's really annoying. It hits all activated abilities. So you probably won't run it because it'll hit you as well for a lot of things. Um, it's strong, but I don't know. I don't know. It really depends on if it hits you as well or not. If it hits you, then you can't run it, obviously. If it doesn't, then sure, put it in. I mean, it's okay, I guess. Uh, next up, we have Prevent Artifact Activated Abilities. This is Null Rod. This is Collector Oof. Um, we're fine with this for the most part. Uh, we do have some rocks, fast ramp, but most of our ramp is going to be in dork form, so eh, we're fine with it. It's alright. It doesn't stop our combo at all. Uh, we do run Collector Oof even if it doesn't uh, affect us, just because, you know, artifacts, everyone else runs a lot of artifacts, um, and it will hurt them more than it hurts us. Next up... Prevent Searching Libraries. This is really strong. Um, this particular opposition agent, which should never have been printed, um, three mana, flash, you control your opponents while they're searching the libraries. I'm sure you already know what this card does. I'm sure it's you see it everywhere. It's so strong. If you're playing black, you have to run this. Um, it's just stupid. Uh, it'll stop our... Tutors, it'll stop our, um, our fetches, so, you know, bad, as well as um, its other effect, which lets you steal that card. Now, you can search for Dakmore in this, but you shouldn't. Um, it's just, you can't use Dakmore. Um, yeah, there's not much to it. You, like, you'd rather take a card that furthers your plan than just strictly hurt someone. Uh, and the only situation will you, where you'll be stealing deck more or even searching a Gitrog player's library is when you flash it on them. So you'd really rather flash it... <coughs> you'd rather flash it on... I mean, sure, if a Gitrog player is threatening the win, but um, you'd rather steal something else. You wouldn't take deck more. It's just it doesn't help you at all. Um, anyway, after that we have Ashiok Dream Render. Spells and abilities your opponent's control can't cause their controller to search the library. This stops, same same things, tutors, uh, fetches. It's really annoying, we do a lot of that stuff, so yeah. Ashiok in particular is really strong. I particularly hate this card because of its second effect on top of the first effect. Uh, targeted player puts the top four cards of the library into the graveyard and then exiles each opponent's graveyards. Now, that's annoying. If we have, like, just a dredger in our graveyard that we're using for pure value, it'll hit that. If we have a combo piece in the library, it'll hit that. If we have, you know, anything. Even if you happen to get lucky off of those top fours when targeting a Gitrog player, though you don't necessarily need to target just the Gitrog player, you can also target another opponent and it'll still exile the Gitrog player's uh, graveyard as well. So, really annoying. You can get extreme, or a Gitrog player can get extremely unlucky, or AKA you get extremely lucky. Um, I hate it. I hate it. That's all I have to say. It's strong. Run it if you can, or if you want. Anyway, on to Stranglehold. Stranglehold, red, four mana. Your opponents can't search libraries. I've never seen this in play. Um, it's sure it has the same effect as the other two, but the other two are strictly stronger. Um, plus, this costs four CMC, so I don't know why a red deck would even run it at that high cost, um, especially in CDH when everything wants to go fast. 
Um, yeah, just don't run it. It's not that good. Uh, on to Avon Mind Sensor. This sees a lot of play. Flash, if an opponent would search a library, they search the top four cards instead. This turns off, same thing as always, turns off our fetches, turns off our tutors. Um, strong, run it if you can, or if you don't have access to the other ones, or the other top two, namely Opposition Agent and Ashiok. Um, or do, you know, it has flash, so you can even do that. Uh, anyway, on to replacement effects, particularly draw replacement. We're looking at Notion Thief here. Do not run this again, or do not play this against a Gitrog player. You may need to run this as part of your thing, but a Gitrog player will just deck you with it, because it's not a May effect, so you, when uh, a Gitrog player gets a draw trigger, you will have to take that. It We can replace that draw trigger with Dakmore Dredge 2 still, so we can continue looping. Um, and just accumulate draw triggers and cause you to draw your entire library and then go to draw one and you'll have nothing left. It's bad. Bad for you playing against a Gitrog player. Um, obviously some decks need this, so there's that, but yeah, just keep that in mind when you're playing against a Gitrog player. I have decked people with this. Um, on to Anafenza, I don't know why you'd run this. I mean, sure, as a commander, this saw play uh, occasionally, but not anymore. It's not that good. Uh, if a creature card would be put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere, exile it instead. This turns off our cre our um, our uh, titans, our titan shufflers. Um, it turns off a lot of our dredgers, or just our creature dredgers, sorry. Um, it's annoying. We have ways around it. Don't run it. It's bad. Um, on to ETB replacement. Root Maze. All artifacts and lands come into play attack. This slows everything down. It doesn't stop our combo. It's just annoying. Um, sure, you can run it. It'll slow everyone down, not just us. Um, stacks piece. It's all right. Um, then we have Thalia, Heretic Cathar. Creatures and non-basic lands your opponent's control ETB tapped. Um... Strong as well, stacks piece. I'm sure. I'm sure you've seen it before. Only use it if you're playing. I mean, I'd honestly, I'd only run it if I was playing stacks because otherwise, it's, it'd probably hurt me as well. I mean, sorry, it wouldn't hurt me because it's only opponents, but it would just it wouldn't give the value that I'd want um, for slotting in a card. I'd rather have like a tutor over this. Uh, next up, back to Archon of Amiria. This is the second effect it has. Non-basic lands, your opponent's control, ETB tapped. It's annoying. It turns off... I didn't mention, all these three cards, they turn off our fetches as well. Because they enter tap, so we have to wait a turn before we can use them. Um, really annoying, slows everything down. Archon of Myria, if you're in white, run it. It's strong. Otherwise, you know, whatever. Um... Now we have cost increasers. I'm gonna list Sphere of Resistance, Thorn of Amethyst, Vryn, Wingmare, and Thalia Garden of Thraben. All of these have increased increased spells by one. Some of them are non-creature, some of them are just Sphere of Resistance is all spells. Um Vryn, Thalia, and Thorn of Amethyst are all non-creature spells. We do a lot of creatures, so we're fine with this, but it does slow us down just a little bit. We can still combo through it, though. It's not that bad of a threat. Um, because da or because uh, Dark Ritual gives three mana, and it only costs one to activate, we'll still be netting positive when we uh, loop through that. So it's not going to stop a Get Rogue player. It'll slow the game down just a little bit when you play it, but we can combo through it. Next up, we have... Ristic Study. We do want to pay for this because fuck you. Um, it's super annoying. If you're playing blue, you have to have this in your deck. Um, you already know what it does. You already know how it works. Uh, we can combo through this though after the first time because we can still net positive with paying one, so we will pay for it. Um, after that, we have Mystic Remora. This is whenever a target opponent casts a non-creature spell, obviously you already know what it does. It's in CDH all the time. 
you play it if you're in blue it's like a must have just like a rustic study whenever target opponent successfully casts a non-creature spell you may cast you may draw a card the annoying part is the uh you may you must pay four to counter it this is more or less just a we will remove this before um or as soon as we draw our deck um before we start looping spells and whatnot that's all there is to it. We just, we'll just remove it. It doesn't stop our combo. Um, not really. After that, we have Damping Sphere. Uh, each player, each spell a player casts costs one more to cast for each other spell that player has cast this turn. Kind of like Storm. Um, super annoying. Same as Mystic Remora. We'll just remove it. Uh, it doesn't really slow us down. It'll just take a little more work. Um, after that we have Trinisphere. This is a little annoying. Um, we will remove it just like all the other ones. We can still loop through this, so it won't stop us. Um, just like the other ones. It's, it's good, sure. I mean, if you're in stacks. Otherwise, you know, don't put it in to stop a frog. Uh, now we have Triggered Effects. On draw, which would be Smothering Tithe. Uh, I mean, sure, you'll get a bit a bunch of mana when we get, um when we combo because this is when we draw a card, which means while we're just setting up uh, or getting our deck more combo off, you'll be drawing a lot. Um, however, it triggers on drawing a card, which means we already have deck more in hand, so we can simply discard deck more again, and this just means that we. Uh, draw cards as we're going through instead of um, instead of stacking draw triggers so it doesn't stop us we can combo over this with and you'll have a bunch of treasures on the stack but you won't have them on your field uh, as long as we go off an instant speed not a threat um, now we have consecrated sphinx not common um, we can do the same thing we did with smothering tithe I don't know. You wouldn't run this to, against a get rug player intentionally. It's, yeah. <laughs> just same with Smothering Tithe. It's like a must have in white. You're not going to slot it in just because they get, a player is playing get rug. No, you're going to have it in because it's an amazing effect. Anyway, on to triggered eff effects affected by APNAP or active player, non active player, which means we do not get to stack our triggers. Um, I'm looking at Harsh Mentor here. Now, this isn't run anywhere. Um, I don't know why you'd run it. It's just not that good. It does stop a get rug player. It is a must remove before we combo off. Um, but why? Why would you run it? Anyway, after that we have Runic Armasaur. Um, not super common, but not super dangerous for us either. Um, we can just draw. Uh, yeah, I mean, we just do the same thing. Or specifically, as the primer says, drawing the deck works out the same as playing through abilities that trigger on drawing a card, just as draw triggers, uh, just resolve draw triggers as they're put into the stack. So yeah, we'll just respond by discarding deck more. Same thing we did with um, some Muttering Tithe, essentially. If I'm reading that correctly, I could be totally wrong, but I don't know why you'd run Runic Armasaur anyway, unless you're in, say, Mono Green or something. Um, otherwise, you know, yeah. Don't run this because there's a Get Rock player, essentially. Um, Planner Void. This is on cards entering the graveyard. Useless against to get rock. We'll just combo through this. Don't run it. Um, now I want to talk about some things that, just like Planner Void, are absolutely useless. This is going to be Silence. Silence does nothing against a get rock player. Uh, we can simply go to end step and then create a trigger and hop out of end step. End step, and because of rule five fourteen point two, um. This effect will have ended, and we'll be able to cast spells again. So, useless. Um, aside from that, there was also 
Graph Digger's Cage. Graph Digger's Cage, yeah, I know it hits graveyards. It doesn't hit Gitrog. Gitrog does not cast spells from graveyards or libraries. We do not play spells out of our grave or our creatures out of our graveyard. We don't play creatures out of our libraries. Um, I mean, sure, we do play creatures out of our libraries on occasion, but like not necessarily, and it doesn't really let us. It's not for combo. Um, we will actually run this against graveyard decks just because it's so good and because it, it doesn't hurt us at all. Um, yeah, so don't run that just because of thinking that, oh, it might hurt a Gitrog player, because it won't. Um, yeah. Anyway, that's all for this. You know the drill. Remember to like and subscribe. Link to the Gitrog uh, Discord is in description, along with um, the Gitrog Primer and my Moxfield pro profile, in case you want to check that out. Thanks for being here. See ya.